The privatization process in Pakistan, sometimes referred to as denationalization program or simply the privatization in Pakistan, was a policy measure program in the economic period of Pakistan. It was first conceived and implemented by the then people elected Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the Pakistan Muslim League, in an attempt to enable the nationalized industries towards market economy. Immediately after the economic collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989 90, the program was envisaged and visioned to improve the GDP growth of the national economy of Pakistan, and reversal of the nationalization program in 1970s an inverse of the privatization program in the period of the 1970s all major private industries and utilities were put under the government ownership in an intensified program called the nationalization program that led the economic disaster in pakistan since then the demand for denationalization gained currency towards the ending of the government of pakistan people's party in 1977 although a commission was set up by general zia ul haq government but no denationalization program began until 1990 the privatization program was launched on the 22nd of january 1991 by prime minister nawaz sharif in a vision to promote free market economic principles private ownership and the mainstream goal to attract foreign investment in the country but as a result a good deal of the national wealth fell into the hands of a relatively small group of so-called business oligarchs tycoons and the wealth gap increased dramatically in the 1990s that halted the program by Benazir Bhutto revisions were made in 1999 and finally launched the much more intensified privatization program under the watchful presiding leadership of prime minister Shavkat Aziz in 2004 Finally, the program was ended effectively at the end of 2007 when approximately 80% to 90% of the industries were put under the management of private ownership of enterprises by Prime Minister Shavkat Aziz. Topic: <laughs> Privatization, spontaneous phase, 1989 to 1993. The momentum and demands for denationalization gained currency towards the end of the government of Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Pakistan People's Party who under intensified their nationalization program had effectively the government ownership management in the private industries of Pakistan, it had built a strong public sector with priority on cement, steel and fertilizers. After the end of government of People's Party, a white paper was issued by General Zia ul Haq's government, followed by setting up the Commission under Pakistan Industrial Credit and Investment Corporation PICIC Chairman N. M. Ukele. However, only three industries were returned to its rightful owners, namely Itafak Group of Industries to me and Muhammad Sharif whilst others remains under government controlled. As an aftermath of 1988 general elections, Benazir Bhutto and the People's Party returned to power, promising to denationalize and replace with the industrialization program by means other than the state intervention. But controversially Benazir Bhutto did not carry out the denationalization program or liberalization of the economy. No nationalized units were privatized, few economic regulations were reviewed. The partial privatization began to kick off by Chief Minister of Punjab Province Nawaz Sharif who presided the liquidation of many industrial units put under provisional government to private sector. All industries based on Punjab government ownership were returned to its rightful owners on a mutual understanding. The prices on units returned to industrialists are still kept as top secret by the provisional government. A large-scale privatization program was launched on the 22nd of January 1991 as the primary economic policy by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif who came to national power after securing a flight-winning victory in the 1990 general elections. The privatization program was inspired and influenced in its nature after witnessing the success of the privatization in Great Britain by British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. 
The first phase of the privatization program covered the half of the public sector industries in terms of total employment, and the program was in a direct response to Pakistan People's Party and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and for instance Sharif's privatization program was swift as nationalization program. During the course of first phase, Sharif presided the denationalization of banking sector and industries to private sector, starting first with MCB Limited. Sharif termed his privatization program as, "...turning Pakistan into a South Korea by encouraging greater private saving and investment to accelerate economic growth." The second phase was promulgated by Sartar Aziz with the goal to transform the enterprises into profit-seeking businesses, not dependent to the government subsidies for their survival. The mega energy corporations such as Water and Power Development Authority and Karachi Electric Supply Corporations, and the Pakistan Telecommunication Corporation were set off to private sector. From 1990 to 93, around 115 industrial units were hastily privatized, including the privatization two major banks, 68 industrial units, and 10% shares of Sui Northern Gas Pipelines Limited. The privatization program came with great surrounding controversies, with lacked competition as the program was largely controlled by favored insider. The recklessness and favoritism shown in privatization of the industrial and banking units by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was to become the hallmark and the rise of strong business oligarch who have concentrated enormous assets, further increasing the wealth gap in Pakistan and contributing to the political instability. Topic. Privatization phase 1993 Introduction In today's world if we look to the competition everybody wants and wish to get an edge over the others. Each and everyone want to become the best and perfect among all the other. This competition and antagonism world come into existence when the company becomes liberalized, in developing countries. In Pakistan, the concept of the privatization was introduced in the late 1990. And after introducing this concept privatization was suddenly implemented in different forms in Pakistan, which includes the direct sale and auction of public assets, outsourcing, commercialization, and public-private partnerships. At that time it was expected that the concept of the privatization would generate more wealth and will lead the efficiency of each company or organization at a peak level, also assume that after privatization the productivity level of organization become higher and thus the organization deliver their best services. Basically the word privatization means to shift the production of a goods or the provision of a services from government to private sector, usually by selling the government assets. Most of the privatization program starts with a period of partial or limited privatization in which the management of the organization sold only the non-controlling shares of the firm in a stock market. As a result management control is not shifted or transferred to the private owners. It is broadly contended that partial or limited privatization has little impact. This viewpoint ignores the function that the stock market can play a managerial and in monitoring performance even though when the governments remain the controlling owner, in British English the word privatization has several meanings. Privatization run very wide range, sometimes leaving extremely small government involvement, and sometimes creates such kind of partnerships between the government and private services provider where the government was a dominant player. The word privatization is regarded as one of the most famous and a prominent trend in finance over the last two decades. Beginning in August 1990, Pakistan initiated a drastic process of stabilization and structural reform that included a vast privatization program. The objective of this study is to analyze empirically the impact of this program on the performance of privatized state enterprises. 
The transfer from the public to the private sector Vickers and Yarrow, 1998 implies a change in the relationships between those responsible for the company's decisions and the beneficiaries of the profit flows the social perspective and the agent's perspective. In general, the transfer of property rights leads to a different structure of administrative incentives, which causes changes in the managerial behavior and performance of the company, as well as in the quality of the service in terms of availability and use. However, as Jean-Jacques Laffont and Jean Tirole mention, it is unlikely that the single theory is conclusive about it, and, therefore, empirical work is of crucial importance. In this study, the impact of Peruvian privatization is analyzed following a methodology similar to that of Laporta and López de Silanes The impact of privatization on profitability indexes, operating efficiency indices, labor indicators and capital deepening is evaluated. Although the impact of these changes on the incentives depends on the competitive and regulatory environment in which a company operates, it is stated that the degree of competition of the products in the market and the effectiveness of the regulatory criteria will also have very important effects on the performance of the company rather more than the property itself Vickers and Yarrow, 1998. In this analysis, the necessary variables are taken into account to identify the role assumed by the regulatory agencies and the forces of competition in the performance of the companies the existence of a regulatory framework, the independence of the regulatory body, etc. In Pakistan the banking system has transformed through liberalization, the entrance of new private banks, similarly the privatization of public sectors bank, and also the tightening of prudential rule and regulations. These changes bring a small effect on bank efficiency and productivity. The dominance of the public sector's banks at the beginning time of 1990s was appeared with a share of 92.2% in the total assets of a banking sector. The remaining banks belonged to a foreign bank, as at that time domestic private banks did not exist. In a time period of 1991 to 1993 smaller private banks are allowed to establish their position in banking sectors and it was seems that a dozen of banks in a private sector were opened and start their operations in different areas. From the period 1991 to 2004 round about seven state-owned banks was privatized which includes Muslim Commercial Bank 1991, Allied Bank Limited, United Bank Limited 2000, and Habib Bank Limited 2003. The Allied Bank Limited was sold in 2004 to a local leasing company. After that a lot of changes were seems as they reduced the staff members working in the banks. But they also increased the staff member salary working in the banks as compared to before privatization of the banks. In 1991 the two publicly owned banks, i.e. MCB Muslim Commercial Bank and ABL. Allied Bank Limited was privatized. At the equivalent time period permission was granted by the government and state for setting and running up new banks in the private sectors. So a license of 10 new banks was issued by the state to commence their operations in 1991. As a result, towards the end of the 2004, the formation, structure of banking sector in Pakistan has considerable changed and it is due to a result of the liberalization, privatization rules and policies pursue in the broader canvas of financial sector reforms. Similarly the shares of the public sector bank in the assets of the banking system was seemed to reduce up to 32.2% in 2004 compared to over 92% in 1990, while the private banks were reached over 50% starting from 1990. In the same way, the share price of public sectors bank in deposit base banking system was reduced to 43.5% starting from 93% in 1990. The main purpose of the privatization system in Pakistan was that to implement the instruction of international level of financial institutions like the IMF International Monetary Fund, Asian Development Bank and the World Bank. 
also argued that almost all private enterprises work more professionally and has also fulfilled the requirements and necessity of the free market economy, as in the United States of America. The concept emerges that the state could confine its role as a facilitator and regulator only. The ownership and operation of industrial, financial, utilities and services enterprises should left to the private sectors only. Similar to other developing countries in the world Pakistan must follow the global rules, regulation and policies to achieve the goals of the industrialization. Similarly other purpose of the privatization was that to earn more money from the sale of the units produce and that amount was to be used to retire the domestic and foreign debts, besides, eliminate the losses of public sector units as they was financed from the budget, in accord with the government privatization policies and beneath its overall direction and guidance the Privatization Commission strive to privatize the state assets in a transparent and an open manner. The major objectives are to attract the new capital and management in order to improve the value, the quality and quantity of all Pakistan's goods and services. One more objective is that to strengthen the public finances by dropping and reducing the fiscal hemorrhaging from loss making public enterprise increase taxes revenues from that of higher economics and profits activity and reduce or lowering the debt service payments by using the bulk of privatization's proceeds to retire the expansive debt. The scope of the current research is that to determine the main and major effect of the privatizations on Habib Bank Limited, United Bank Limit and also on Allied Bank Limit in Pakistan. Similarly Government of Pakistan determined to nationalize the banks. For this purpose the Nationalization Act was introduced in the year 1974. Major banks were privatized during this short time period. For logical and analytical purpose the effect of the privatization of the privatized banks were categorized Effects on the losses and profits of this privatized bank For the reason to understand the subject matter, the analysis and the recommendations have generalized to the whole country and on all the banks in a country, as the environment and the culture prevailing consider to be same throughout the whole country. The key objectives of the above research are to examine the impact of the privatization on bank profitability. To measure the performance of the banks previous to privatization and after the privatization. The PC Privatization Commission was in trust to sell out the federal government-owned property such as its own shares in the banks, in the industrial units, in oil and gas companies etc. in an open and in a transparent manner. Privatization Commission has also a right to sell the state-owned banks in the country. Here a question raised and that needs to be addressed as follow. Has privatization of the national banks achieve its goals, objectives or not? Compares the efficiency and performance of the banks before the privatization period and after the privatization period. What is the impact of the privatization on the bank profitability? Does the overall performance of the banks improve after privatization? In 1992, the leader of the opposition in the parliament, Benazir Bhutto, vehemently criticized the whole policy measure program at the public circles. While Commerce Minister Faisal Hyatt and Finance Minister Sartaj Aziz enthusiastically projected the privatization as a success phase. Benazir Bhutto had, with a touch of drama in the state parliament, maintained that, while one brother was selling, other was buying. After 1993 general elections, the second phase of the privatization program began in 1993 under the disciplined macroeconomics policy of Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Her program aimed to capitalize on the rising business oligarch class but the program suffered with great difficulties and problems even inside the People's Party. The second phase involves the privatization of financial institutions, several telecommunications corporations, thermal power plants, oil and gas sectors. 
Benazir's government did not privatize all state corporations, especially those who were collecting large revenues abroad. Only certain industries were privatized, which were at the brink of financial collapse. The first attempt was made to privatize the United Bank Limited, but the proposal met with great hostility by the Workers' Union and opposition. Proposals were also made to put the private ownership to Pakistan Railway, but it was rebuffed by Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, who quoted, Railways privatization will be the black hole of this government. Please never mention the railways to me again. The economic growth declined when the U.S. embargo began to bite the government of Benazir Bhutto. By the end of 1996, approximately 20 industrial units, one financial institution, one electric power plant and 12% shares of Pakistan Telecommunications Limited were privatized by Benazir Bhutto. The second phase remained continued until 1998 when it was abruptly ended by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif after imposing economic emergency after ordering to perform capability of nuclear deterrence in response to Indian nuclear aggression. All stock exchange, stock markets and the second phase of the privatization program were immediately halted by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif until his government was ended in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Privatization intensified phase, 1999-2008 After the end of government of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, Pervez Musharraf invited Shavkat Aziz to take the control of declining economy of Pakistan. The GDP rate had declined from 10.0% in the 1980s to 3.6% in 1999, with foreign debt increased to 44% up as compared to 1986. Major economic reforms were introduced by Shavkat Aziz who first consolidated the industries under one platform and restructured them before setting them to privatization market. Numbers of controversial sales tax were enforced by Shavkat Aziz, mostly on import duties, and based on these reforms, patronage-based industries remained under serious threat and privatization discussion began to take place on usual based. Aziz consistently worked on to restructure the industries and provided a vital leadership and economic relief after 2001 also played an important role in strengthening the patronage based industries financially and physically. In 2004, Aziz became Prime Minister and initiated an intensified privatization program in order to grow the GDP rate annually. Aziz forcefully and aggressively pushed 100% privatization of state owned corporations while virtually planned to privatized 85% of banking sector. Starting from 2003 until 2007, Aziz successfully privatized 80% of the banking industry into private ownership enterprises, while privatizing the numbers of shares of Pakistan International Airlines and other mega-corporations into the public circles. Nothing is sacred. We are packaging up our companies. These state-owned corporations SOEs have been well run for the past few years and now we are offering them to investors from all over the world. Intensified privatization policies had major impact on public sector organization which diminished with the privatization of the state-owned corporations. Prime Minister Aziz defended his privatization program as he maintained that these institutions viable while they were on the verge of collapse." Aziz's privatization program subsequently improved the country's growth rate by 6.4% 8.6% a year. Inflation rate dropped to 3.5% in last three years as against 11–12% in 1990. However, in the end of 2007, Aziz's privatization program suffered a major setback which initially halted the privatization program in the country. The Supreme Court halted the privatization of Pakistan steel mills after transferring the inquiry from FIA to NAB, while issued standing orders to keep the steel mills under the nationalization program. 
The proceedings and Supreme Court's decision initially halted Aziz's intensified and aggressive privatization program at the end days of his tenure. Topic: <laughs> Public perception. The privatization program still marks the question of big controversies. In public circles, it has generated much more heated debates where it is perceived to have more negative impact on civil society. The general perception remains highly contentious and polarizing issue in the civil society, gearing up the negative sentiments among the population, including the continued injection of public money in many privatized entities and less than expected improvement in the services. Although, the program produced a relatively faster and efficient way of promoting competition and enhancing growth, on the other hand, the program experienced the exponential increase in unemployment, reducing the access of workers' class to the basic needs of life and contributed in declining the social status of workers' class into poor get poorer, but on the other hand, a significant support for the privatization program has been raised in the media. In an editorial written in Dawn, it argues that the privatization program has been a key constituent of structural reform programs in both, the developed and developing economies, in order to achieve greater microeconomic efficiency as opposed to macroeconomics. Overall, the GDP rate grows smoothly with privatization program remains in effect as opposed to nationalization program that it had dropped the GDP growth rate of Pakistan, Dawn maintained. Major proposals were made to privatize the major and most profitable industries of Pakistan, namely the Pakistan Railways PR, where the Express Tribune argued that the national railways condition has gone from bad to worse under government ownership, and only privatization program can save the railways with the creation of sense of competition that would drive improvement. Adversary opposition Despite its success, the public sector organizations, labor and workers' unions remained extremely hostile towards the privatization programs. In 2005, major demonstrations and workers' revolt took place in Islamabad by the PTCL Workers' Unions Action Committee, in an attempt to privatize the Pakistan Telecommunication Company Limited PTCL. Despite the demonstrations the state corporation was privatized by Shavkat Aziz which resulted in workers losing their jobs in 2012 an unsuccessful attempt was carried out by current government of Pakistan People's Party when the government sought to privatize the mega state corporations particularly the power sector major nationalized industries such as WAPDA Yesco Tesco Pepco were proposed by the finance ministry to privatize the power distribution companies. Major workers' strike were initiated by the central labor unions, and after receiving much criticism, his government halted the privatization program of energy sector, and nationalized the remaining power sector industries due to public pressure. The Pakistan People's Party's intellectuals remained skeptical about the privatization program and targeted the controversial implementation on numerous occasions. The People's Party maintained that an elitist or top-notch educational system, which exceedingly comprises private sectors foreign-affiliated schools and universities, has built the sole source of producing some proficient minds. While on the other hand, the privatized madrasa system of education has been patronized different sects of religion, patronized different sects of religion, and further exploited as source of religious extremism and associated with terrorist outfits and their offshoot. The private sector education system negative effects of private sector education and it has created a disparity between the rich and the poor, drive. Professor Athar Maksud of School of Business of the National University of Sciences and Technology NUST, set forward his argumentative thesis that there are two reasons behind why the privatization has not been successful as was originally perceived are economic reasons and socio-psychological and political reasons. In the 1990s, the privatized enterprises have laid off employees by introducing schemes like Golden Hand Shake.
Topic See also Nationalization in Pakistan Pakistan Muslim League N Right-wing politics in Pakistan Economy of Pakistan